In this short video, I'll be discussing about MRCP. So, in the last one month, I've been getting few doubt queries about MRCP. So, I thought I will make a video which will address all the questions uh, of the MRCP. So, I've put up, a, I've, I've made a list of questions in the order of how it should be structured to discuss. So, I'll start them. So, uh, those who don't know, I've passed. MRCP part 1 and part 2 and currently I am preparing for my paces. So I will not be talking about paces uh, in detail but I will be talking about part 1 mainly and then a separate video, video for part 2. So uh, the first question is why MRCP, why do people opt for uh, preparing for MRCP. So the first major reason goes is uh, anyone who is a Indian medical graduate and he's passed his MD and he wants to work in uh, the NHS UK. So if he wants to work, uh, he will require to pass MRCP 1-2 paces and he will get his GMC registration and if I am not wrong, he will be working as a ST3 level registrar in the medicine part. And if you want to do further training into the super specialties, you will need an MRCP qualification and then you will you can apply for the uh, super specialties there and it depends on uh, the, uh, the super speciality, there are 4 year courses, there are 3 year courses based on the groups. So this is one one uh, reason why people opt for MRCP. The second reason is you get a degree, you get a GMC registration, and that increases your increases your job opportunities and pay in other countries like for example the United Arab Emirates. So you have a better pay and better job opportunities in Gulf countries and UAE. The third option is that if you you want to work in India also, but then uh, so and you you will be planning to work in a corporate hospital with the increasing competition so there is a there is an increase in the job opportunity and increase in the pay when if you are a md medicine uh, post md medicine and with along with mrcp as compared to people who are just plain md medicine so the second part we will be discussing about is the pattern of the exam so uh, there are three steps in the exam part one part two and paces so part 1 and part 2 are uh, computer based test uh, both of them uh, is a single day test and um, so the pattern includes their single day test there are two papers of 100 mark each in two sessions so the first session what i have given is um, uh, in that uh, the first session of the question uh, paper was uh, planned at uh, 10 am to 1 pm in the afternoon and the second session was from 2 30 pm to 5 30 pm uh, in the afternoon uh, so these are the two tests, two papers, 100 marks each, both of them, uh, which is there for three years. There is no negative marking. The question pattern is usually the a clinical stem, and there are no imaging images in the first part of the MRCP. Whereas in second part you have images uh, where you will be subjected to ECGs, uh, clinical images, and um, other uh, schematic images. And paper two has more lengthier stem-based questions as compared to paper one. So, if you uh, ask me about the um, difficulty level of paper 1 MRCP, part 1 MRCP, I feel that anyone who has significantly done good in NEET PG uh, will easily uh, go through MRCP part 1, but uh, there you require a dedicated part 2 uh, part two preparation for MRCP because um, I, I feel that there are smaller, smaller things which are very important for preparation of MRCP part 2 and the question level slightly goes up. So do, I do not recommend anyone with a neat PG knowledge to um, opt for an MRCP part 2 without solving the questions and the pattern pattern based question because I, I, I have noticed a lot of uh, students who have um, opted for MRCP part 2 just after MRCP part 1 without uh, formal uh, preparation and they have failed. The third part goes is about the registration. So you have, th there is an MRCP website, MRCP.UK. So at that you have detailed, detailed explanation of all the things, the exam dates and the fees, the registration. Uh, so earlier when in the last year in 2024, there used to be four sessions uh, for MRCP part one and part two. So you had uh, every three months you had an exam. But since 2000, uh, now now in 2000, 2025 they have changed it to only three sessions. Uh, I would I think that is due to the point that uh, you don't get a lot of centers for paces. So there is overcrowding at part one and part two paces, part two part one and part two MRCP. So 
there are less slots for MRCP paces which is very evident so they are maybe uh, decreasing the uh, traffic uh, at the paces uh, they want people to go slow from pace part 1 part 2 and paces so uh, the exam cost approximately 655 euros so for and uh, but the but the paces uh, exam is uh, costlier it costs around 1300 euros so the it is important uh, to book uh, or register for your exam on the day of exam on the day of opening of the um, your registration for example if you have a registration on 6th of jan you are supposed to uh, log into the site uh, approximately in the early morning at 6 and you should preferably book it because the centers for example if i want mumbai and if i don't book uh, early i i might not get mumbai i, I might have to travel to delhi or some other uh, place in india which um, becomes difficult both in co concerns of uh, expenses and both in con uh, both in terms of uh, my uh, comfort uh, so this is very important so if when you are registering preferably register on the day of uh, the registration date so that you get your preferred center the fourth point is when when should you opt to give mrcp so i say all my all my juniors also that uh, uh, the best time is to give in the second year because you are slightly free during that time first year is definitely heavy in the government colleges uh, a lot of dnb students have asked me about the same during the first year i still ask them to uh, plan for at least uh, mrcp part 2 in uh, their second year part 1 can be given for them in first year if they have time but for government medical uh, md residents i i, I say them uh, i say them that you give your uh, you prepare for 3 months during your second year you give your mrcp part 1 and then you prepare for 3 months consecutively and then you give mrcp part 2 so I, I would like to recommend that you give MRCP part 1 and part 2 in succession uh, uh, so that in the, in the 6 months or 7 months whatever it is that you finish with your part 1 and part 2 and paces I feel that you should give just after your after your MD practicals or MD you complete your MD DNB uh, uh, with a short course of 2 to 3 months with a, with a coaching. So the fifth fifth part we'll be discussing about is the resources. So I've heard a lot about resources, uh, even the applications, um, uh, phone applications like Pass Test, Pass Medicine. These are the two major uh, applications which are very famous for uh, MRCP. I utilized uh, Pass Test during my part one, and I found that it was very uh, good. I didn't use Pass Medicine for my part uh, for my uh, part one, so I'm not going to comment about that. When I saw them, uh, when I saw them, I found the questions to be slightly uh, shorter as compared to past test. And the other thing is, you have you have uh, past papers only in the past test app. So when I when I used past test, I solved approximately ninety percent of their uh, questions from the cube bank. I solved uh, almost two years of uh, papers, which are which were approximately eight papers, past papers, and I found my result to be very good. Sorry, so. I feel that uh, for part one, pass test question bank will be enough. Uh, the second part is that uh, books. So um, I the only book which I used was Philip Caldra. So uh, so I found uh, genetics, biostat, dermatology, psych uh, psychiatry, and these topics to be difficult uh, to retain from any other book. And the, I found them ready-made into the into the book of Philip Caldra. So I feel that especially for these topics. Uh, where you especially palliative care and um, oncology which you which will find difficult to read from Harrison I feel that this is very important uh, for a short revision so I have read, read those topics I solved those questions I found it to be very easy and I have uh, revised a few points from Philip Caldra during during my last revision days as well the third point is that uh, people say you should read Oxford manual I read it during my second year of MD medicine uh, it is good in general but then I feel that uh, past test and uh, uh, Philip Caldra for part 1 MRCP is more than enough. For part 2 MRCP, I, so I solved uh, questions from past medicine as well uh, and from past test also. In, in general, I found that uh, th there is a difference in the point that in MRCP part 1, I found the questions to be repetitive in the form that the topics are repetitive and the the pattern of the question and the scenario was repetitive so in the first paper 
uh, I found that the both the both the with the first part in the both the papers I found that the almost 15 to 20 percent of the questions were repeat but in second part I found that to be unusual uh, uh, so I, I think only 5 or 10 percent of the questions were similar uh, scenario the topics were same but then I feel uh, it was not as familiar as I have solved in past tests. So that becomes that 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 makes you feel difficult for part two as compared to part one. So the last point is tips and tricks for preparation. So give proper three months of preparation for part one, part two. Do daily MCQs of at least hundred MCQs. So when you prepare it, it gets difficult to solve hundred MCQs of cardiology. It is very tiring. You get exhausted. So uh, what I did is I used to solve twenty five questions of cardiology, twenty five questions of uh, rheumatology so I am and I found two few topics were uh, very interesting and I, I felt that if I read if I solve hematology 50 questions I was very comfortable in solving so uh, solve uh, questions uh, in a mixture so that you do not get exhausted and uh, and the other most important thing is that for example I'm solving past test question from uh, past test question rheumatology so I made a 20th notebook saying that all these subjects are there so I I used to write the topic and very very important factual points about the topic to revise it in the end so i made two books uh, out of them of the, out of the qbang uh, and uh, i have i had made a separate page in the start of the subject which had um, topics only topics for example if i'm solving rheumatology rheumatoid arthritis uh, relapsing polychondritis and uh, gi still syndrome so and uh, i had i had marked them single star two stars three stars based on the uh, based on the sorry based on the point that how frequently they have been asked so at the last I, I knew that I know I should know in detail about rheumatoid arthritis so I used to see see um, uh, revisit um, Harrison if I want for only those topics and I used to uh, I, I used to get an idea that okay uh, this topic for example one or, one or so topic is asked very uh, rarely but uh, only few things are important so that was that was an important task to do to prepare yourself for revision the other thing is that uh, you should uh, apart from seeing the pattern that one mistake I feel that I, I had done is that I was lazy in solving papers so I feel that every candidate should actually solve 12 papers that is three years past papers for uh, your MRCP part 1 and part 2 because it, it somewhat builds a confidence that you can do uh, when you solve an, when you solve your QBank it, it gives you slightly one or two times you will feel that okay in an overall paper it will definitely get difficult but when you solve a past paper and you score around 65 70 percent in that 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 gives you confidence that okay overall it will be good so you can do it the last point which i feel is which is which i found uh, one of my friend had told me that when you solve your paper in past test in, uh, in the final paper uh, while you are doing your computer based exam you can highlight your uh, you can highlight your uh, uh, points in the question so i what so i tried that both in part one part two and found it difficult find find it found it very important because when i vis revisited these questions so i had a very small gist for example there was a lengthy stem question i uh, marked about the age of the patient the comorbidities of the patient the chief complaints of the patient and important investigation which i found very important during while i was reading the question so um, while i spent uh, almost 45 uh, 45 seconds during my first reading of the question i had marked them and i found that question to be slightly confusing and i was confused between two options which i had kept of kept for review so i had revisited that question i have seen those uh, highlighting point and uh, the, the later i have finalized an answer uh, seeing those positive points so uh, a lot of points were favoring uh, um, and what this is very important because when you complete your paper you gain confidence and when you come back you have slightly better thought so i feel this is very important you should highlight your important points you should come back and then when you see those uh, review questions then uh, highlighting points become very important because it is very difficult to read that long stem question again so all the best for your uh, mrcp journey any question if you feel i'll be uploading this on youtube as well as uh, on instagram so any questions you feel you can message me on youtube as well as instagram i'll be uh, happy to answer all your doubts. Thank you.